You're looking at a dual voltage geared motor that was actually sent to me by one of you guys. So thank you, Jeremy. Here you can see on the label, it is in fact a dual voltage motor. It can be wired for 110 or 220. Don't let that confuse you. That number could just as easily say 115 and 230 or 120 and 240. And they all mean essentially the same thing. Down here you see the amps and I want you to note, because we're gonna talk about this again later, that at 110 volts, we're drawing 2.5 amps uh, at its rated speed of 1720 RPM. And then at 240 volts, the amps are exactly half. And when you double the voltage, you have half the amps running through the motor at 1.25. When you wire a motor for 220 or 110, what you are essentially doing is taking the two windings and wiring them either in parallel for 110 or series for 220. And I'm gonna demonstrate that with some resistors. Here we have two resistors. These are 470 ohm resistors. And they're gonna represent the two motor windings inside of our motor. In order for the motor to run properly, both of these guys need to be supplied with 120 volts from the wall, at least here in the US. If you are uh, in Europe, let's say it might be 220. If we connect them in parallel like this, where we connect these two sides and these two sides together, and then we supply our neutral and our hot wires, you would have 120 volts across each. Now that I've got both of these guys hooked up to power, watching my multimeter, you can see that across this resistor, I've got six volts. And across his partner, he also has six volts. And that makes sense, right? Because both of them are directly connected to power. But, you could also hook them up like this. This would be a series connection and this is the orientation you would use for high voltage. If you connect the windings up in series so that the voltage has to go through both windings and then you check across the first winding, you see we actually only have half the voltage. and the number is negative because of the direction of current flow. But if I switch these around, just to remove any confusion there, this winding has three volts, and this winding is also seeing three volts. And of course, if I double this, now I've stacked my batteries so that they are supplying 12 volts. And as you can see, if I check across here, I've got 12 volts or double my original voltage, and each winding, we'll get the six volts that it's supposed to get. So this is actually a really simple and clever way to allow a motor to be a little bit more flexible. It can be wired for high voltage or low voltage. And the same thing applies with motors that go from 240 to 480 and so on. And that's because going to higher and higher voltages has benefits. You can run a much smaller gauge wire at higher voltage for the reason I mentioned earlier, which is less current. If you cut the current in half, you can now use a smaller wire. Now that we've got some background knowledge, wiring this motor is gonna be a little easier. Looking inside right away, we can see that there is a capacitor inside for the start winding. And we're gonna come back to this here shortly. I've got all the wires loose now, and you can see that there are six wires, and this is pretty typical for a single phase dual voltage motor. If you have a three phase motor, there will be nine wires here and that's outside of the scope of this video. We might cover that another time. But anyway, we've got six wires and you can see two of them are red. Those are the starter winding, but that's not always the case. Sometimes they're all the same color. Sometimes they're all different colors. Every manufacturer does it differently and you cannot rely on the color. Now the assumption I wanna start with is that you don't have these numbers. The only purpose these numbers serve is to identify which wire is which. So, if your numbers are missing, make some numbers. The actual number is not important at all. Just take a piece of tape, wrap it around each one of these guys, and put a number on it. We're just gonna make this nine, just at random. So that's the very first step. Go ahead and label all of your wires, and that way you can keep track of which wire is which. 
Now since mine actually have numbers on them, I'm not gonna go through that step. Next, we're gonna take our multimeter and set it to measure continuity. Uh, in this case, it's gonna beep when it measures continuity and that's what that little symbol means. All continuity means is that the two things that you are touching are electrically connected. So even if I grab this pair of scissors, touching any two things that are electrically connected, this is what you're trying to figure out inside the motor. And just like I showed you earlier with the resistor where we're trying to figure out which two ends are which. So two and three, there's nothing. Okay, so one and two have continuity. And you would continue on with this until you find all the pairs. And there you go. So we will write these numbers down. This time what we're gonna do is change our setting to measure resistance. And what we want to know is which winding is different from the other two. You're going to find that the resistance for the two motor windings should be very similar. And the one for the starter winding will usually be much higher, sometimes twice the resistance. And that's just one of the ways they save money. All right, so now we are set to measure resistance. And I know that one and two are a pair. 4.8, now we want three and four. Oh, look at that, exactly the same, 4.8. And then we need our starter winding, or what we think is a starter winding, now that we've seen the other two are the same. And look at that, just as we predicted, much, much higher. Here I've made an illustration just to show you exactly how the connections go. Well, now that you know what the wiring should be, this part should go pretty fast. So I'm gonna just connect these with the box open like this, since this is just a temporary connection for me. But you do wanna make sure that you make good solid connections and that they can't short out to the inside of the case. One more thing I need to show you before we fire this guy up is the capacitor. So the capacitor needs to be wired across the starter winding. And as you can see, that's exactly what we have here. It doesn't matter if it's connected to six or five in my case or whatever numbers you made up. Uh, interestingly though, if you take six and wire it to the other pair, if you switch the five and six in my case, you will also switch the rotation of the motor. So if you need to reverse your motor, disconnect five and six, flip them to the other side, again, whatever number it is, flip them to the other connections, wire it back up, and your motor will spin the other direction. I am gonna throw some tape on these though, just to make sure I don't accidentally touch anything here and give you a fireworks show. We don't want that. So this is gonna be pretty ugly because again, I'm gonna disconnect this as soon as I'm done recording. All right, that's good enough to get us through this wiring session. So I'm gonna hook this up to my hot and neutral and then we'll see if the motor runs. Oh, ground wire. Okay, I do have one more thing to show you. The whole point of ground is to provide a safety feature. Should you have an electrical fault, let's say you've been running the motor too hot, one of the wires burns loose and shorts out and touches the inner case of the motor. That current is gonna flow through the ground wire, it's gonna go back to my electrical panel, trip the breaker, and shut the power off. And that's the only safe way to handle an electrical fault like that. Now the other end of this is not plugged in just yet. And there we go, we have a very crude, but wired motor. And the verdict is... All right, good stuff. So I made this video because you guys asked. So if you have any other questions for me, feel free to post them in the comment section. I love talking as much as you guys love to listen. So thanks for watching.